What's up, YouTube? I'm on stream right now, twitch.tv slash And I like to read these articles live so that we can have a very quality chat discussion below me, as you can see, while I read through very important articles that Overwatch releases. And in case you don't keep up with everything, I got you. I'll read it out to you like an audiobook from Aaron Keller, AKA the director, game director of Overwatch was an article that says, looking to the future of competitive Overwatch, AKA ranked. This was posted on Friday, September 8th. I know we're a few days late. I wasn't on for the past few days, but here we are. Let's see what he had to say. Hello everyone. We've seen a lot of conversation around competitive in Overwatch lately, and I'd like to take most of this week's director's take to address it. But first, let's have a quick hero update. We made several changes to Alari when she was enabled for ranked. Most notably, the healing for her pylon was reduced. That's right, Pylon went from 40 HP every 0.9 seconds to 30 HP every 0.9 seconds. So it's a pretty significant nerf. And her ultimate projectile size, the Captain Sun, was decreased while it also no longer pierces barriers. So Brig can block it, Ryan can block it, Sigma shield, Sim wall, Ramatra shield. I think that's all the shields in the game. Those are big nerfs. Uh, the pylon nerfs effectively equalize the healing between her pylon and her solar rifle. Pre-nerf, the healing pylon accounted for about 62% of her healing, and now that number is 55%. This change also brings her more in line with other damage forward supports, whereas before, she was outputting healing numbers close to Life Weaver and Mercy. We're happy with those latest changes and the additional changes made to Captive Sun. We'll continue to monitor her damage output and see if anything needs addressing next season. Additionally, we're looking at Roadhog's underperformance and targeting his rework for the mid-season update in Season 7. For context, we are mid-season 6, so it's another two months from now. This is probably looking like a mid-November, early November timeline, if I had to guess. Our mid-season was four weeks deep. The new uh, season for Season 7 would probably be... We started the season, what, mid-August? Yeah, it's probably gonna be mid to late November, if I had to guess. So there we go. That's when Roadhog's finally gonna get touched, and this healing number looks healthy. If you ask me, I actually think Alari's in a pretty good spot. She's very rewarding if you're good at her, but uh, the nerfs, when you nerf the pylon healing and the captive sun, the captive sun ultimate's already a hard ultimate, but the healing nerf on the pylon made it so she built her ultimate a lot slower and her ultimate was not as impactful. So that aligned her win rate. So I think she's in a fine spot right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually think she's still like low A tier now. Now let's talk about competitive play and ranked. A lot of complaints, right? So over the past few weeks, more people have been talking about competitive play. Conversations really start to trend following a video from SK. So SK made a video. Uh, we can link it below where it's like, why Overwatch rank feels Overwatch, so miserable. This, this was a very big rant where it comes from love. It comes from a place of love. I want Overwatch to succeed. Okay, so that's important because it's it's important to be critical of the game in a healthy manner. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that when they just simply default to ranked is bad, fix ranked, fix matchmaking. But like you need to voice your concerns, right? I'm sure there were like very good valid criticisms out there. For sure, but it gets drowned in the sea of people just you doing like the low hanging fruit complaint. Ranked bad, fixed now. You know, what's wrong with it? Oh, my teammates were bad. I mean, that's also like, okay. Uh, Eske was pretty, I, I listened to this video before and I watched it already, but she was pretty eloquent in explaining the pain points, the psychology on why people feel X, Y, Z, etc., etc. So that was good. So that's good that uh, Aaron's actually acknowledging the video in the community from an influencer, a content creator, so there's more more weight to it. So that's really good. So Aaron says, I'd like to join in on the conversation. I agree with a lot of what has been said, and I wanna share a glimpse into what the dev team is thinking and the direction we're likely to go with competitive in the future. The team has been working on changes to our competitive mode for some time, but moderate to major changes to the mode won't find their way into the game until sometime down the road. I won't be able to address every issue that people are discussing in this piece, but I would like to address some of the major ones. We'll share more details on specifics as we uh, get closer to releasing the changes. Okay, so let's see what he's addressing here. Some feedback we've heard about the current system is that you're not pleased with how much information uh, you have about the match and your progress is hidden from you. True complaint, a lot of people are not happy with this. We understand you want to know how the system works, especially regarding how your rating goes up, down, or even changes at all when you get a competitive update, along with trying to figure out how fair a match is at the start of a game. For instance, we've seen players go five and two and be demoted at their next competitive update. Many of the reports investigated so far have occurred due to MMR decay. 
So for instance, if you typically pick DPS and go a significant amount of time between playing other roles, then MMR to Decay could kick in between updates for lesser played roles. Since Decay is tracked per role, this could pull your rating down far enough to cause the demotion. When players see this happen, they would justifiably assume there was an issue with the system, right? When people go five and two, they'd be like, why did I derank when I went super positive? That is a very valid complaint, right? It doesn't make sense. So they would justifiably assume with it. Many of the changes that came with uh, our comp 2.0 update were based on values centered around pulling frustrating moments out of the experience, but it came with the cost of obscuring other information. So going forward, we're going to shift our values to provide more transparency to the mode. This doesn't necessarily mean that the older skill rating or SR in Overwatch 1 measurement is or isn't coming back. They don't want to make statements for sure on what they're doing, but they just said they're working on it. They acknowledge this, but they're going to try to be more transparent if they know MMR the case kicking in. Also, I teased my dog with the treats earlier and now she really wants to go outside. Sorry, I'll give you one more. This is for ranked. This is for ranked. Pew. Go find it. This doesn't mean SR is coming back. So as we continue to iterate on the possibilities, we very much appreciate your continued feedback. We want you to have a better understanding of what your true rank is and why wins and losses cause it to move up or down based on the general skill level of all players in a match. Additionally, we understand the way we track progress uh, that can cause losses to feel more frustrating. So currently the system will provide a rank update every five wins or 15 losses. I just want to point out, I've never gotten the 15 losses card ever in Overwatch 2. Now, I don't know if I'm, I'm in the minority here. So type one, if you have gotten the 15 loss update and type two, if you've never had it. And then we'll let the chat roll down here everybody after each win progress is shown on the screen during the end of round flow but losses are not when the game doesn't acknowledge the loss it can feel as though the whole match was a waste of time so we're making changes so that the system will contribute your progress toward a rank update after every match whether you win or lose so that no match feels like a complete waste of time. We're also talking about the top 500 leaderboard and some of the unique issues for that experience. So this is a very like lots, there's five top 500 is a very small 0.0101% of the player population, but the loudest voices on like social media are a lot of content creators and streamers. And a lot of them are top 500. So this is what you might hear a lot of. And then those complaints echo throughout their communities, whoever people, the people that watch their content and then it feels like it's a it's a big thing but this is a very small problem but let's acknowledge I, I appreciate how aaron's acknowledging it if you are in top 500 you're among the most competitive players in the community and we think there are additional needs and issues than the rest of the community one example of a unique problem is the difficulty of climbing the top 500 leaderboard later in the season versus playing early in the season when it's easier to place higher true they also have more issues with queue times, grouping with friends, and finding fair matches when the spectrum of skill in those groups can be fairly substantial. So this is true. When you play early in the season, you can place a lot higher. So in the small top 500 community, you kind of get like a fake rank early on, which I'm kind of like benefited from. I'm going to be honest. I kind of benefit from it. I have a very high peak, but do I actually deserve it? Eh, you know? I peaked pretty high. I peaked rank 16 thanks to this early playing enough qualification games early in the season. But as the season goes on, I definitely fall lower in top 500. You know, it, it's top 500 is a small community, but having something that's meaningful, like a, a leaderboard that has gives someone like a reasonable meaning to, to strive for is healthier for the greater population outside of the people who, that are already in it, of course, right? Having like a sub a goal that 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 is a fair system in top 500 is important. So this is not like an exclusive. I did mention the 0.01%, but you know, you want something to chase and aspire to. You need inspiration. And this is this is good if it's meaningful. We also believe that top 500 experience is a more full featured experience than how other players uh, interact with competitive. Competing with and passing other players on the ladder makes a top 500 leaderboard exciting. It's not something that most players get to experience, but eventually we'd love to find a way for players of other ranks to have an experience in climbing the ranks that feels more granular than just moving in and out of skill tiers. This is a long-term goal and it's something we're just thinking about right now. I actually think this idea was something that League did. I remember if you were like in Platinum 4, there was like a, or like Platinum 3, 
there'd be a bunch of platinum threes in the game but they'd all have like a unique name and in, in your bubble of like 100 players you're like i don't know garen's guardians or something like that you're in the platinum three garen's guardians and there's like 100 people here so that you can be moving up and down in your little like platinum three and then when you make it a platinum two or whatever it has a different name i'm not gonna lie i thought that system was kind of weird there's too many names to remember so it didn't I'm just like, I'm plat three. I'm not Garen's Guardians in plat three or like, you know, whatever the hell the league characters names are. Darius's drivers in Diamond 2. I don't know if they still do that system. I haven't really kept up with that game in a long time. But yeah, that's just something they're thinking about. So I don't know about this. It's just interesting to see how they iterate for this one. Aaron says, Overwatch 2 is always evolving and growing we'd like for it to be uh, we'd like for it to be doing that in a way that is exciting for players and in a direction they would like. I know, Yuki. Almost done. One of the best ways to accomplish this is to have a healthy dialogue between players and devs. Some of these comp changes will be made in the short term, like how we treat MMR Decay, but other issues will be handled with broader changes coming early next year. Ultimately, we are aiming to make the system more transparent, add more frequent reporting, open up some of our restrictions for grouping at high skill tiers, and looking to introduce new competitive rewards. Let's keep the conversation going. Thanks for reading. I'll see you in-game. At TLDR. System more transparent. Why am I going five and two in D ranking? It's due to MMR decay, but they should probably let you know if you're decayed so you're not caught off guard. That's number one. Frequent reporting, opening up restrictions for grouping. So this is a sentiment that I don't actually necessarily agree with unless they implement it well. I know uh, some of my other friends, like I know Sam and Flats and everybody, like I think having more than duo queue in Grandmaster Plus is very nice for content. And I would like that in a, in a, in a vacuum. But like, I'm not an Overwatch League player. And I'm not gonna lie, in Overwatch 1, when I ran into the triple stack Overwatch League group, I was like, man. You run into the Jonak Fury Carpe Trio when they all lived in LA, and it was like a nightmare playing Ana against all three of those guys. I remember that. It was, uh, I remember it like yesterday. Flashbacks, man. I remember Horizon Lunar Colony attacking and then fucking Fury is just sitting on me on Winston and then Carpe has the open angle on Widow and I can't play the game because he just absolutely destroys me. So I don't know how they implement this. In Valorant, I know you can solo duo trio and five stack, but you can't four stack because four stack means one guy gets left out, not in group chat, blah, blah, blah. That's not fun for the fourth player. So maybe if they cut out for the fourth stack, maybe have, if you five stack, you only play against other five stacks. Solo duo trio might be able to work. Maybe the trio would have a very tight restriction, duo a bit looser, solo would be the best. I think it does depend on how it goes. Now, to be fair, I also think it would be very, if I was a solo player playing against the Overwatch League three stack, that's kind of tough. If my entire team is solo queue, but they end up having the three stack of owl players, that's not fun. We also need the trio of contenders, owl players on my team, and then it's fun. Then I'm down for it. And I think team queue, when they added it last season, the pre-made five team queue was data for them to experiment with something like this. So um, these are this is a step in the right direction. I appreciate Aaron's acknowledging it. A lot of times the articles are like, we can't talk about the specifics, which he did mention, and they can't say specifically what, what's happening, but like, they hear you, they explain the, the stuff with like, you know, having a positive record and, you know, deranking is mostly due to MMR decay, but the game never tells you this, so you were rightfully confused. So he points that out. I think they said in the short term, they're gonna look at this. Changes in the short term will be how to treat MMR decay, but the longer stuff, they have to iterate on this, and it won't be until next year, that's two seasons away. In any and live service game, if you're going to develop something now, it's still going to be many months away before it hits live. That's just how it works. Some people would be like, just revert it now. Back to Overwatch 1. No, that's also going to cause more issues, bugs. You can't just press a button and then make everything go back to Overwatch 1 like that. Re-implementing a new ranked algorithm. Ain't no way it's that easy. But they, it looks like they are iterating and it will be happening next year. So that's, that's good. So I appreciate the transparency step in the right direction complaints have been heard i do think like people have been having issues with matchmaking for a while and they probably had to let it marinate and sit for a few seasons like okay it is bad like if it's rough for a season or two like they made tweaks to it and like maybe it'll settle down and everything but it hasn't settled down people are still having issues okay let's let's relook at this so i like this article this was a lot more transparent than the other ones appreciate it and that is all for the video let me know what you guys think in the comments